Hey geeks, it's Minx, and it's time for X-Files review. I'm sorry this is getting out late, but hey, I'm back. Um, my computer, uh, the cooling system actually died on me. Uh, so I had to wait and get that replaced right here. So um, now that it's fixed, I'm back, and I'll actually be doing episode three and four together. Um, so let's jump into it. Episode three uh, went back to the old formula of Monster of the Week, um, which in some ways was really awesome to see because I did like the old school feel of it, you know, the Monster of the Week, um, and it had its point. The point of the episode was pretty much getting Mulder back to the fact that he believes, and he believes that there is things that are not part of that conspiracy, covering up conspiracy, you know, that the government is behind all of the unnatural things that they've, you know, studied in cases throughout the years. And um, so that was important. It was an important episode to set that up. Now, uh, it was kind of ridiculous, um, but there were some funny points. Um, I mean, essentially they run into a situation with a lizard man and a were lizard at that. Um, at first they think he's killing a bunch of people and um, that it's a guy turning into a lizard when in fact it's actually the opposite. It's a lizard man turning into a guy and he doesn't understand what the hell's going on with him only that he's having severe urges like going out and getting a job and you know trying to provide for himself getting a dog you know things like that um it was kind of an interesting little flip to the normal um oh what's the word to the normal deal yeah trope there we go to the normal trope to things like that um so that was kind of cool a nice little fresh take on it um some of the jokes were absolutely ridiculous um especially when uh, he confronts the dude in the cemetery and actually learns what's going on um and it turns out that he is a lizard man who was just out enjoying an evening um when he discovered some dude biting another guy and he gets bit by a human and that's how he turns into a were-human. Um, and it turns out that the guy who bit him is a creepy as fuck uh, animal control officer who apparently has a history of abusing animals, uh, which is really sad um, and kind of gross. So um, he's been out killing people and... Um, but the entire thing gave Mulder a reason to believe. So that's that's very good. That keeps things going. Um, it didn't touch on anything uh, that I remember about um, the uh, overarching story, which is, you know, about the government being the one behind all of the UFO kidnappings and the aliens and the abductions and that they've been experimenting on people and, you know, injecting them with alien DNA and yada yada. Uh, we didn't touch on that at all uh, in the third episode. Um, so it was just, it felt a little detached from the overall um, story. Um, but still, it was kind of fun nonetheless. And you figure they had to do at least one monster of the week. Um, episode four, honestly, I was a little underwhelmed by episode four. It, um, it kind of harked back to part of the main story, which is, um, discussing yet again, uh, Mulder and Scully's child, um, William, uh, which, which makes me further believe that they will, um, seek him out and, We'll see what's going on there. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if the government actually has him, somehow found him and has him somewhere, um, which would be totally shitty and um, potentially, but potentially leaving things open for another season. Um, with that said, the main plot was kind of a random monster of the week mixed with Scully's mom dying um, and kind of that's what was leaving open the um, the sun bit. Um, 
the monster of the week was kind of gross. It was the Trash Man, uh, who turns out it was created by this guy's really intense thoughts. He was an artist who was working really hard on um, his artwork. He was focusing with the uh, intensity that actually made his ideas come to life, including some other rather ghastly um, creations, but the main one being a creature... A uh, disgusting, disgusting creature that traveled in a garbage can defending uh, homeless people in Philadelphia. Um, essentially, uh, this company, these two guys were um, getting ready to build an apartment complex and a bunch of homeless people were on, in the way, so they were transporting them to an old abandoned hospital um, where they could have shelter, um, which honestly, it was just so they could build their thing, so it's completely selfish motives. Um, and this trash man was coming in and literally ripping these guys apart, like literally ripping their arms off and their heads and, you know, completely dismembering them in a quite gruesome way. Um, and he, it was a weird thing. They tested like for DNA and stuff and they couldn't find anything organic or non-organic. So in a way he didn't exist. So I guess that kind of makes sense. Um, I think the most disappointing part of uh, episode four was actually the fact that there wasn't really, it didn't feel like there was a, you know, good conclusion to the episode. Um, so once the dude was finished, like ripping people apart, you know, they come, you, it's pans back to the artist who they've already confronted and he's, cause this was originally made out of clay and he's changed the face to a giant happy face. Um, like, he's really, really thought about it and trying to make the guy good or whatever, and they kind of just leave it there. Um, I'm not sure if that just means that the creature is completely gone, because uh, it didn't look like it. There was a, uh artist a spray paint rendition of it uh, up on a billboard, which leaves it completely open to it reappearing, although um, most likely we won't see it again, because uh, we tend not to with the Monster of the Weeks. Um, at least not very often that I remember. Um, and then we're left with the aftermath of Scully's uh, mom dying and, you know, the realizations of, you know, we need to know if our son's okay uh, kind of a thing. So, uh, like I said, it, it brings it up again. It's kind of punching us in the face at the, this point. They're going to search him out. It's, it's, it's inevitable. Um, and like I said... Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if the government actually has the kid, um, if they didn't find the uh, adoptive family and probably uh, snatch up the kid. Uh, that wouldn't surprise me in the slightest, um, and I could see it going there. The way it's shaping up and um, how they haven't really been following the overarching story um, too closely, it makes me feel like they're actually opening it up to bring back another partial season uh, next year. Um, which wouldn't surprise me at all. I think it's a, more of a test to see how it does. Um, I'm going to keep watching, obviously, because I'm going to bring you guys your reviews, but also because, I mean, it's the X-Files. Watch this when I was a kid. I, I've got to keep going with it. Got to see where it goes. Um, so, episode three, I'm going to go ahead and give a A-, minus because it was pretty hilarious. Um, it was completely far-fetched and ridiculous, but it was very tongue-in-cheek. Um, the lizard man was very cool, totally a practical effect. Uh, the, the transition when he was transforming back into a lizard man was fucking ridiculous, and it made me think of the early 90s uh, CGI kind of effects. Um, so that was kind of neat. You know, they're not overdoing it with the CGI, like the today's standard CGI which is really nice. Um, episode four, I'm going to give a C. Um, it didn't feel like it really meshed well together. It didn't feel like the, um, the two stories, it didn't feel like they really gelled very well, um, which was really disappointing. I didn't feel like there was a solid conclusion at the end. They left it a little too open and at this point, they're really just punching us in the face with the fact that they really need to get a 
um, tie off the loose end that is their child um, and his, you know, fate. So I'm looking forward to episode five, seeing if they get back on track with the overall story arc. Um, so far, it's not too bad, considering they're they're bringing a, a 90s thing back. Um, I'm still super excited. I still love that they're still using the uh, original opening sequence. Um, the original title sequence is always epic and awesome. Gives you chills every time. Um, so if you enjoyed this review, please click that little red button down there that says subscribe. Uh, please also like, share, comment. I respond, I respond to all comments, um, so just keep it civil. Um, I also will be doing, uh, I'll be posting up my Agent Carter review as well, because I know I'm behind on that. Um, and I will likely have a review on my new cooling system, because uh, so far it's it's working beautifully. And yeah, stay tuned for that stuff. I'll see you next week. Prepare those tinfoil hats. Later, geeks. <laughs>